like many people, I was really disturbed by the um, terrorist incident in Christchurch on Friday, to the point where I wasn't sure if we should go ahead with this meeting. Um, I, I was waking up every morning with a, a, a knot in my stomach and, and just thinking, what has the world come to? Um, and in the end, with regard to the meeting, I, I sort of decided, well, life has to go on, um, e even if it won't um, be anything like normal for the, the families and the communities who, who've been affected. Um, but not everyone feels the same way. Not everyone even necessarily knows how to feel. Um, and in some cases, that's because people don't have a connection. Um, I didn't necessarily have a, a um, personal connection, but for some reason, I, I, did, I really did feel it. But I thought it would be um, a good idea to, um, to highlight a post that um, Paul Matthews from ITP did earlier in the month um, to make some of those connections. So this, this is Syed Ali. Um, he came to New Zealand from Pakistan. He joined Intergen in Christchurch um, and he worked as a senior software engineer. He was a coder working with web technologies, uh, SQL databases, ERP systems, uh, and he was also um, a technical consultant. He could have been any one of us. Um, one of his colleagues described him as so gentle and so hard working. And then he went on to say, he went off to the mosque on Friday as usual, but this time he never came back. This is Atta Alayan, um, who is another technologist. Um, he came to New Zealand from Kuwait. Um, the New Zealand media have been focusing on the fact that he's a sportsman and he's represented New Zealand um, at uh, futsal. Um, but a connection for us is that he's a technologist. So as a teenager, he was um, a very keen gamer, in particular Counter-Strike. Um, he did a computer science degree here in New Zealand, and, and so his gaming had to take a bit of a back, um, back sort of uh, step there while he finished his degree. Um, and then once he graduated, he uh, began working as a developer and a UX designer. Um, so that particular combination, um, he apparently excelled at. He was really good at it. Um, he ended up co-founding a company um, that made apps um, mainly for, for Windows, Windows Phone and, and Windows platforms. Um, and uh, one of his colleagues said um, he was driven to reach his potential and in all aspects of his life, and also assisted others in fulfilling their potential too, um, both with the um, technology side of things and also with um, his futsal. Um, he was coaching um, the uh, local Christchurch Boys High team um, and also the women's futsal team. So the um, murderer who ended the lives of these two men and, and 48 others claims to be a white supremacist. He claims to be supreme, superior, based on his, his skin colour alone. He couldn't be more wrong. So here we are at a tech meetup, recognising a couple of people with whom we share common interests um, and passions. But as technologists, we also have to face up to some unpleasant realities. Technology played a significant role in spreading the, the lies and, and the hatred that fueled this attack. Um, the social media platforms in particular um, use algorithms that serve up an endless stream of, of um, material that can take 
a misguided person or even just an inquisitive person on a journey that ends up radicalizing them in a, in a series, a very long series of very small steps. So as technologists, we have to ask ourselves if the code that we're building could be used in that way, and if so, what we might do about it. We need to think about how that might happen and, and how we would stop it. And uh, of course, if we have um, ideas about how we might stop that sort of thing, here's a forum where we could talk about that. Um, and discuss some of those things, even if just asking questions, raising, raising the, the issues that we see. Um, and finally, I, I wanted to um, touch on one small thing that, that we could do here. Um, so when, when racism and discrimination rear, rear their ugly heads, we need to stamp that out. But that's easy to say and not necessarily easy to do. Um, one thing that can help, I think, is if there are rules that are clear. So, it, so then it's easy to call someone out if their behaviour is outside the rules. And we don't have rules here. Um, we've sort of skated by without them so far. So I think what we need to do is adopt a code of conduct so that there are rules and they are clear. People can go to the website and find out what they are. Um, but as important is we we need to have people who will enforce those rules. There's no point having a code of conduct if we ignore it. And that needs to be more than just one person. The need to be um, three or four people who, um, whose names are listed, that someone here, if, if they had a problem, they could talk to one of those people, report an incident, and know that it would be handled properly. So um, that's pretty much all I had to say. If you would like to be involved in, in selecting and, and um, adopting a code of conduct, and I'm sure there are some really good ones out there that we can pretty much just pick up and use, um, or if you'd like to be involved in, in volunteering to, to be one of the people who will deal with that sort of thing should it happen, um, then speak to me, um, maybe email me or talk to me here, um, or later if you've had a think about it and decide you want to help out. Um, and that's all I had to say. So thank you very much, everyone. Sorry it's gone on a bit later than anticipated. Um, bit of mingling, bit of chatting, and then uh, we'll see you in a month on the 16th, I think. And please, if you want to talk, speak to me and book a slot. Thank you. <laughs>